Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about the Colac and District Family History Group. This is our logo and the image we use on our website, Facebook page and our marketing materials. It is Murray Street, the main street of Colac in the early 1900s. The Family History Group was formed in 1980 and since that time it has evolved from that small, dedicated group of family historians who met in each other's homes to the current day where we are located at the History Centre in Copac. We now have around 150 members with 20 active volunteers. During our 40 years of existence, the one constant is that there has always been a core group of passionate, dedicated volunteers working to preserve the history of the people of our district and to assist others to research their family history. The area our group covers is all of Colac Otway Shire and we also incorporate a few localities nearby who have strong ties with Colac. There are other smaller history groups in our region including Cressy, Birigurra, Otway Districts, Forest and Apollo Bay and we support those groups by directing or connecting people to them and by sharing information or resources that relate to their particular area. This is the central pillar of our resources, CAD Info, our database. CAD Info was developed by Bernie Gleeson, a retiree from Warrnambool. Bernie and a colleague, Phil, maintain and continue to develop the database to streamline the research process. Initially, information was gathered and recorded onto a card system, and that was all transferred to this database. Once that task was completed, volunteers began to work their way through our collection. We now have around 300,000 entries on CADINFO. CADINFO is our first port of call to find out what information we have on a person or family. We simply type in a name and it displays the type of information and where it can be found. And thanks to some wonderful work by our IT volunteers, a lot of the information, including photographs, images, and newspaper clippings, are now linked to the database and with just a click can be displayed with the details on the screen. If you would like to know if your family surname appears on our database, it is easy to check. Just go to our website, Click on the name search feature and follow the steps. Following are a selection of items that we have in our collection and some examples of their use. From our inception, cemetery records have been seen as a vital inclusion in the collection. One of the earliest projects the newly formed group undertook was to establish an alphabetical list of people buried in the Colac Cemetery. Ten members spent days and weeks wandering around the cemetery, recording the information that was on the headstones and transcribing entries from the cemetery workers' books. They also researched deaths and burials in the local newspapers and travelled to Prov Laverton to look up inquests, wills and probate and anywhere else that they could find potential records of burials in the Colac Cemetery. It was a mammoth task, and as it was prior to computers, all of the information was then manually collated and hand-typed before being bound into a book. That original green book, as it is fondly known, is still one of the resources we turn to when we are researching. Our interest in the cemetery continues and we are currently about halfway through a major project called Almost Forgotten, where we are identifying, researching and writing stories about the people buried in our cemetery prior to 1900. So far we have records of more than 400 people who are not on the online database and evidence that around 70 people recorded as buried in Colac are actually buried elsewhere. 
This is vital information for our members and anyone researching Colac district families. The project will possibly take around 10 years to complete and the estimated cost, which doesn't include volunteer hours, is $10,000. There has been so much interest in this project that we developed a separate Facebook page to report on the progress and the stories we have uncovered. If you're on Facebook, just look up Almost Forgotten 1900 and you will find it. Producing a Pioneer Register was also seen to be an important early project for our group. Our first Pioneer Register was published in 1989, following an appeal to the community to submit details of the, their early Colac district ancestors. A family sheet was distributed and the details of more than 220 families were recorded. A second register was established in 2003 that contained details of more than a thousand people, including when and where they were born, married and died, their parents and their children's names, which ship they travelled to Australia on and how long they had been in the Colac district. The information provided for the Pioneer Registers often included correspondence, photographs, stories and other documents. This formed the basis for another valuable part of our collection, the family files. There are two four drawer filing cabinets with drawers that are bulging with hundreds of vanilla folders bearing Colac and district family names. In the files you can expect to find anything from a family sheet, correspondence, printout of family histories, photographs, stories, newspaper cuttings, school certificates, anything we come across relating to that family that isn't being filed or stored elsewhere. Members or visitors researching their families are given full access to these files. One of our most popular resources is school records. There are more than 20 folders filled with school roles. All of the names have been entered onto CAD info and are easily searchable. Information includes actual date of birth of the student, the date of enrolment and often departure, where the student came from and where they are transferring to, the father's name or guardian and that person's occupation. It was really pleasing to be able to tell one family researcher that her grandmother had not been mistaken when she said that they had lived in Birigara. No evidence had been found to support her story but the school records clearly showed the date that all of the children in the family enrolled at the school, which school they had come from, where the family was currently living, that the father was a bootmaker and that they had left nine months later, and the name of the school that they were transferring to. The three volumes of Vision and Realisation are also part of our school collection. These give a wonderful potted history of all of the schools, often including the names of the teachers, where the school was located, who provided the land, and the dates the school operated. We have also collected a series of school histories. These were often prepared by community members with an attachment to the school, and many of these schools no longer exist. Some years ago, Susie alerted us to a grant to have the local rate book scanned. We were successful in obtaining that money and we now have digital copies of the rate books up until 1923. Susie also organised volunteers to transcribe every fifth year from those rate books and our volunteers are currently transcribing the years in between. This is another long-term project. Those rate books are now accessible and searchable through our CAD info database. By typing in a name, it will bring up the image and you can maximise it to be able to read the details of the entry. Most entries give the name of the person and their occupation, whether they are the owner or lessee, 
and the name of the owner. The location and size and type of property is also detailed and the amount of rates paid. The map collection is a perfect companion to the rates books. We have a large collection of hard copy maps to view and many have now been scanned and are able to be accessed on the computer. The names of the landholders are currently being transcribed from the maps and entered onto CADINFO. Some of the happiest responses we get from researchers are when we are able to show them where their ancestors actually lived. These are the Johansson sisters, Spencers who moved to Colac around 1905 to start a drapery business. They were in the town for about 20 years. As Spencers, they left a very small footprint during their time here. There were no weddings, baptisms, school records or marriages. And at first glance, apart from a few entries in Trove, it appeared like we weren't going to be able to help the family. There were no entries on our regular database but then we found a few entries on the CAD rates database. From that, we were able to find the location of their shop in Murray Street, Colac, work out what the town would have been like when they went about their daily business, and also what they most likely would have witnessed. You see, their shop was right next to Victoria Hall, where some of the major historic events of the day took place. We were also able to locate the house that the women had bought to live in. It verified that a photograph of one of the ladies was actually taken near the veranda of that house in Colac. The researcher was able to visit the house and was warmly welcomed by the current occupant who, who was keenly interested in the history. We were later given a copy of the certificate of title that she was able to purchase from the information we provided. We have a large and expanding collection of birth, death and marriage certificates. We were also among the group of organisations who pooled our church records at Susie's suggestion, which gives us access to a large range of baptisms and marriages and some burial records. The certificates are kept in folders in our storeroom. During this isolation time, our volunteers have transcribed all of the information from more than a thousand birth certificates, providing valuable details such as the date and place of marriage of the parents, maiden name of the mother, which is often incorrect or not known at the time of her death, and the names and ages of siblings. We also have details of the people attending the birth and will be able to build a database of women who acted as a midwife in our more remote areas. On other certificates, we found that witnesses and informants often unlock mysteries or confirm relationships. It is impossible to go through all of our collection in detail, and these are some of the other items that are extensively used by visitors and by our researchers. Hospital inpatients and outpatients. These only cover a few specific years in the late 1800s to the early 1900s. And although they don't have a great deal of information, they are another form of evidence that the person was in Colac at a specific time. They do have the place of birth and where the per person is currently living, and some carry the name of the ship that was travelled on. We have a collection of hundreds of obituaries from newspapers and eulogies from funerals. These often provide information about the life of a person, which is sometimes not known by the descendants or even available elsewhere. Funeral booklets often have a favourite photo of the person who has died and the actual date of death and sometimes the date of birth. Names of family members are sometimes also mentioned as well. Some of these are collected by our volunteers, but others are donated to the group. 
Duty Called is our military collection. We aim to identify all of the local men and women who have served in the armed forces and nursing corps in wartime and in peace. We've been concentrating on World War I and World War II soldiers and nurses and have collated hundreds of photographs and service and family history. Clippings, photographs and stories. We have literally hundreds of folders with thousands of items on many different subjects, all relating to the people of Colac and District. These were started by early members of the group and are gradually being digitised. We also have thousands of photographs of people of the district at various stages of their lives. We have collections of schools, weddings, families, sport and everything else you can imagine. This is another volunteer project in progress. Library, newsletters and publications. There is a library of history books for members to borrow and visitors to browse through. Quarterly newsletters are produced for members called Collagens. And current publications by the group include the two Pioneer Registers and also Pioneer Days, A Woman's Life and Stories of Our Pioneers, Volume 1. We organise workshops, exhibitions and family history seminars for our members and for the general public. And last year we also had a conservation clinic where the audience brought along items and documents and learned how to conserve them. We try to hold these at the History Centre to save money and to introduce people to our centre. But we also have held them at the local library where we have a very good relationship. This is Janet McCalman, who gave an excellent presentation at the History Centre on convict history for one of our workshops last year. We have organised several exhibitions over the years, including What We Did in the War, which commenced the centenary commemorations of World War I in Colac. This year, we were planning an Otway Timber Families exhibition as part of the Australian Heritage Festival. It was cancelled, but we will endeavour to have the exhibition later this year. Family reunions. Recently, we've been involved in assisting with family reunions. We found this to be beneficial to our group and to forge ongoing relationships with the families. Some of our members have prepared window displays that have included comprehensive family trees for the family reunions. These have also proven to be of interest to the general public. We have a special opening of the Family History Centre on the day of the family reunion and volunteers share the information and stories we've collected about the family. In late December, more than 80 descendants of David Archer, an early settler of Colac, came to Colac as part of their weekend family reunion. They spent several hours at the History Centre, and while they were there, they sang us a traditional Cook Island welcome song and also did a traditional Cook Island dance. It was a delightful experience for everyone. Open days are held to show our members and the public what we do and why, and to show what's in our collection and demonstrate how to access it. The latest open day was held in March this year, and we had at least two new volunteers join the group afterwards. Unfortunately, it was one week before everything was shut down. We also hold an annual afternoon tea for all of our volunteers as a thank you for their work including ones that work from home or the cleaner who comes in when the centre is closed and our IT maintenance volunteers. We invite our past volunteers to come along as well in appreciation for their work.
The Family History Group is well equipped for members, volunteers, visitors in the community to research and record their family history. Our equipment has been built up over the years from donations, we get second-hand computers when the Shire Council upgrades, grants, fundraising and through our membership dues. We have eight desktop computers with four dual screens, three portable computers, a dedicated digger computer one, and one computer for the library catalogue. We have a microfiche reader, photocopier, printers, scanners, etc. and access to a microfilm reader. We also have an iPad, a digital camera, audio equipment and a projector and screen. We have internet access, genealogy CDs and DVDs, thousands of microfilms, access to the Collect Heralds on microfiche and a well-stocked library of books about our district. We are located directly opposite the railway station in the Copac building, the History Centre is to the left of the front door. If you're coming to visit us, please contact us first and let us know who you're going to be researching so we can try and be ready for you. You can email us through our secretary's email, send us a message on Facebook, phone and leave a message or contact us through our website. While we are collecting, recording and preserving family history, we connect with people throughout Australia and across the world. We invite and encourage them to visit Colac, generating income for our local businesses and enriching our community. We believe we are more than just a family history group. We believe we are an asset for our community. Thank you.